right. If you guessed that linguine here, the Kenyan sand boa, eats mice, you were correct. So what I have here is a frozen mouse. Well, it's not frozen anymore, I thought it out. And what we'll do is we'll present it to him with some big tweezers, forceps, and we'll watch what he does. Oh, striking a miss. That's okay, we'll give him another shot. Oh, there he goes. That was a much more restrained strike. So, you can see that Linguini has a pretty good grip on it. Um, and right now, his head is still about the same size that it was before he started eating this mouse, although, once we get to this side, we can start to see a little bit of a better angle on it. All right, there we go. So you can see that he's opening his mouth really, really wide. Snakes can actually open their mouths and eat things that are about two to three times the size of their head. That would be like you grabbing a watermelon from the store and trying to swallow it whole without chewing, without cutting it up, without anything. Um, not possible, and that's because snakes have really different skull structures than us. Probably all of you have heard maybe that snakes are double jointed, or maybe even that they don't have bones. They do have bones, they just have more bones in their head than we do. So we, you know, if you right now take your hands and you feel your head, you can probably find the two bones that make up your head. So that would be your skull, your brain helmet, and also your jawbone, which is attached at your chin. It's all one piece. Um, a snake on the other end still has a skull to protect its brain. It actually has two jaw bones and they're not connected at the chin. They're two separate bones. And so actually this is a good angle right now. We might be able to see that he can move his lower jaw bones independently. And he actually will use that in order to help walk or push the food item down his throat. Now on top of, the, of already having an extra bone because they have two independently moving lower jaw bones. Ooh, there's a really good angle on the jaw bones. Uh, they also have another bone called a quadrate bone that's in between their skull and their lower jaw. So they actually in total have five bones in their head. They've got their skull, they've got two quadrates and two lower jaws. And that gives them, you know, a total of four joints in their head where we only have two. You know, we have one jaw joint on either side of our head. If you put your fingers right in front of your ears and open and close your mouth, you can probably feel that jaw joint. So snakes end up having four joints in total in their head, which means that they can open their head, their mouths really, really wide in order to get something two to three times the size of their head down. Another important difference that snakes have, kind of snake anatomy difference, is if you take your, your fingers and kind of tap your chest, you can probably find your sternum. That's your bone that connects your ribs in the front. So, you know, we are really completely enclosed. Our ribs are completely enclosed. Um, snakes do have ribs, absolutely. They do have backbones, but they don't have a sternum. So their ribs can actually flex out really, really far. And we'll see that when he, when he gets this mouse down and actually swallows it, we will be able to see the lump of it traveling through his body, which is pretty neat. Yeah, snakes do have a lot of the same organs that we have in our bodies. They're all just elongated. So they have, you know, a heart and most snakes have two lungs, but one of them is really, really small. It's kind of vestigial. It doesn't really do anything for them anymore. They have an esophagus and a stomach. They have intestines. So this mouse will pass through those same systems that it would pass through, you know, when we eat something. But it will take a lot longer. I don't know about you, but I like to eat a lot of times a day. 
and snakes actually don't eat many times a day. In fact, they don't eat many times a week. Sometimes they don't eat many times a month. So Linguini here, he gets offered a mouse about once a week. But most snakes out in the wild wouldn't eat nearly that often. So they eat big meals to sustain them for long periods of time. Ooh, that's a good view. Um, and they don't need nearly as much as much food as we do because they are what a lot of people would call cold-blooded. They're ectothermic. And that just means actually that they don't make their own body heat. It doesn't necessarily mean they're cold. It means that their bodies are the same temperature as wherever they are. So right now, if my house is... 65 degrees then his body will be 65 degrees although where he lives in his enclosure he's got all kinds of heat lamps and heat pads since he is a desert snake he needs it to be between 80 and 90 degrees in his tank so as you can see it is kind of a process to eat a mouse Starting to make some good progress. See if we can get a better angle on it. You can probably hear my dogs in the background. We'll do some videos with the dogs another time. Let's see. He's really sort of tucked his head under his body. see his teeth there. Snakes have teeth that are curved backwards and that helps them hold on to their food. I'm just noticing that there's a few wood shavings attached to the mouse. I'm gonna see if I can get them off so he doesn't accidentally ingest them. All right, so now we're starting to see the bulge inside of his body, but I don't want to catch this last part where he kind of has to pull his head forward. Oops, we got a couple more. It's another shaving. 
go. So now he'll use his muscles to push the mouse down through his digestive system. You can kind of see the bulges there right now and you can see it moving down. And those muscles act a lot like the muscles that are in our digestive system that kind of slowly squeeze our food along. All right. Sometimes we catch him sort of adjusting his jaw, you know, after having it open for so long, it sort of just feels a little funky. And you can see what kind of looks like a yawn and he's just sort of adjusting his jaw. Nope, looks like he's ready to go burrow again in the sand. All right. Thanks, Linguini.